Hello and welcome everyone, it is me, the Laval, also known as the Power to Lulis, back for you with another Phoenix Format Tournament recap. And this is kind of a special one since we decided to play uh, the September 2011 format and kind of go on that little nostalgia trip for this one. Um, yeah. Let's, you know, get into the deck, shall we? We had eight contestants, which is kind of, you know, the usual number, but for this one, it was a bit less. Starting off the uh, decks that were brought in, we have, of course, Moftronics. Um, yes, then uh, we had a Dragonity deck using a Blue Eyes draw engine, which was kind of interesting. Um, we had someone playing Scraps, featuring the signature Scrap Iron Scarecrow, as you do. Also very iconic 5 piece card, amazing that thing. Um, we had someone playing X Sabers, also a really iconic 5 piece deck, you know, do a lot of special summoning. And all that good stuff. We had someone playing Worms, something I actually did not, you know, really have on the radar before the tournament, but this deck actually was the thing back then. Um, we had someone playing TGs, the uh, Tech Genus archetype, um, doing some fancy Excel Synchro plays. Then uh, we had someone on Neo Spatians with like classical Euro cards like like that of Prisma to mill Neos to go into some Neos fusions. And capping off our decks was a 6M list. Also a really iconic deck back then, a really powerful deck at the time um, that still even today has some cards limited. Um, but yeah, with all this out of the way, we should get into top cards. And our top four in the end ended up consisting of six amps of tech gainers out of worms and out of dragoonities. Going into those deck lists, uh, starting off with Tadani's or Zane's uh, Dragoonity list using a blue eye straw engine. We see, you know, the classic Dragoonity monsters like Ducks or Legionnaire, accompanied by Actus and Phalanx for some more synchro plays. But what you can most likely see is here the uh, Triple Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Triple White Stone of Legends alongside Trident and Cards of Consonance for some really ridiculous draw power at times. You know, playing pre rata Future Fusion since this is 2011. Um, really cool, really cool. Then, moving on to... Scroll down further for this one to Jaden's six Jaden's or Thunder Super's uh, six samurai list. You know, playing fairly standard ratios, I'd say. Playing uh, two elder, playing two birdman for some extra bouncing and some extra tuners. Um, going down onto two Kagemusha here to keep those Naturia Synchros in play. And playing the powerful 6M cards like Gateway, United, and Dojo, of course. Um, going into our top two, we have... Civs! TG list, playing, you know, Vice Dragon and the Junk Synchron to help a bit with Synchro plays, as well as a Plague Spreader Zombie. But otherwise, playing essentially, I think the most, or like the whole... Uh, TG lineup in uh, terms of monsters that were out in the day. Rush Rhino, Warwolf, Catapult, Dragon, Striker of course being a really good card. And then the extra deck is packed with all sorts of powerful Synchro monsters. And yeah, as mentioned I didn't have this deck really, you know, on, on my radar or anything, but Worms topped this event. Uh, congratulations to Alescape again for topping this event, playing, you know, the Triple Xex, Triple Yagan, 
for an amazingly consistent uh, engine that lets you consistently bounce your opponent's Synchro Monsters back into the extra deck. And Xex gives you just a really great normal summon playing King and uh, Evil Dragon and Answer as well as the Illidan as some bombs. Um, W Nebula Meteorite also being a rather good card and offering to the Snake Deity is basically Icarus attack but better with you know Black Wings kind of just getting more and more hits in at this time. But yeah, I'd say with all of this out of the way, um, we can get into some replays to see how this tournament actually went down. And I'll see you guys in Edo. And here we are again in the replay file. Uh, in the replay section, we are seeing uh, Dire Reapers and Sivs round one match. Starting off, you know, rather slow as you would expect from a 2011 format. Here comes the normal summon Full Helm Knight with the Dark Soul into Brionic. Discarding the Dark Hole to bounce the, I think it was the Cyber Magician back to hand. Triggering Dark Soul in the end phase to add a copy of X Saber Bogart Knight to hand. Compassing the monster at end phase, leaving him open for a direct attack with Rionac, normal summoning the Bogart Knight in main phase 2. Gotham's emergency call gets MST here. Sif specials out the striker and sets another something. A little detail about the TGs I did not know before. Um, most of these float. Like uh, Striker, Rush Rhino. Uh, Warwolf as well, Cyber Magician, uh, most of these on destruction will float in end phase, which is uh, kinda big and will lead to some really good advantages that Sif can secure for himself. Cyber so Wonder Magician gets summoned, hits the Mirror Force of the Wonder Magician and wipes the board with Black Rose Dragon. Dyer over here top decking into a copy of Solemn Warning, Call of the Haunted brings back Wonder Magician on Sif's turn. We see the normal summon for Cyber Magician come out and Power Gladiator hits the board and he makes Blade Blaster with Wonder Magician and Power Gladiator sets to passes it back to Sif. Junk Simpson will bring the Catapult Dragon to make the Librarian just for the style points and the name. And Blade Blaster will get in one punch before Dire Reaper surrenders. And with that, we move on to game two. And here we are with game two. This time, from Sif's perspective, seeing a rather decent opening. And I'd say um, Rhoda alone is a really good card. Finding the Striker, which can special summon itself to the board. Normal summoning Rush Rhino, but getting Mirror Force for two here. But as mentioned, those TGs, they all float. So in end phase, he can add Jet Falcon and Catapult back to his hand. The TX, TX, TGX3 DX2 will get MST'd here. And the Churia Bakian hits the board, which is a card I think is really good in this format, to be honest. And uh, looking back on a lot of these replays, could definitely have made the difference in some cases. But one of the most iconic cards of the time is being made here an ally of Justice Catasta, which is easily able to take care of that Barkian. Of the Haunted summons back the Rush Rhino after a normal summon full hand knight. Uh, from brings back Catapult Dragon, which will get hit with a chain disappearance. Full knight will negate the Rush Rhino attack, so Catasta has to take care of it, and Junk Synchron will sink in for 13, making another. Really iconic Synchro Monster here in Stardust Dragon. Monster rebounds back to TG Striker, goes into a copy of Brionac, also a ridiculous card at the time, especially pre Arada, with you know not being once per turn and everything. And with that, this is actually the moment where Civ loses connection, but both parties agreed on this not really making a difference here. And with that we have entered semi-finals already. This is Alescape's semi-final match against Jaden or Dunder Super. We see the normal summon Zex come in to, you know, mill the Yagan and the Yagan is able to set itself on the board while Zex is present. And Yagan is basically a compulsory evacuation device. 
We see Mizuho and the Grandmaster of the Sex Sams come down. Yagan will be flipped for the Mizuho and the One King will be answered with a solemn warning. Mizuho hits the board again, still having the Grandmaster on board, sets a judgment for the following turn. We will see a set of a 7 tools. Sex will mill a Yagan, Yagan will special itself. This is a rather consistent engine and I'm surprised that this is actually working as well as it is. Um, which is probably like my biggest shock. Here we see the Birdman going into Euroquizus. Attacking into the face down for some burn damage. Euroquizus on attempt to gain attack will be bounced back to the extra deck. We see the top deck into the most unfortunate of trap dust shoots, setting a Yagan to his heel. Summoning back the uh, Kisa of the Monster Reborn, bouncing the Grandmaster this time, which will just put itself back on the board in the main phase two. Sets two more cards, in one of them being Compulse Number Summon. Kagimusha makes another Euroquizus, but is met with Compulse again. And here we see those chainlings really come in. Not really the Solemn Wars, but at least it is some counter traps being exchanged. Flip summons the uh, Cartros here to grab a sex, makes magical android to run over the Grandmaster of the Six Sam and gain back some life in the end phase. Top decks into Elder, not much he can do here anymore. We see the mystical space circle, but another sex will almost ensure that this is game. Some more life points will be gained off magical android and a top deck Kageki will offer the surrender let's go on to game two again with these game two swatching the uh, game two switching the perspective a bit i'd say this is a rather decent opening hand for Jaden. he definitely has a lot of options but he is again faced with worm sex and a set yagan backed up with book of moon and solemn warning Getting Elder and Kagemusha on the board for Sheehan. Sheehan is a powerhouse of a card, but it is nothing in the face of something like Solemn Warning. Gets Duality for a offering of offering to the Snake Deity. Actually a really interesting and cool card that actually came up really big in a lot of cases in this tournament for him. So that's the ultimate offering. He draws off the 6 Sam United, so has one Bushido counter remaining on his dojo. It will kind of depend on how many six sense you can see. Sees the Kageki is able to summon Kagemusha of the dojo. Would it be enough to make Shien though? Judgment the Book of Moon. Makes Ally of Justice Catastor. Gets bounced by the Yagan. And this is looking very grim for Jaden. Seven tools, the offering to the safety here. Book of Moons, the XX. We see a top deck into Great Shogun Sheen, which is not the most helpful card in these situations. Flip Summon XX and the Ultimate Offering will be met with the Surrender. And with that, I think it is already time to move on to the finals. And we have hit the finals. We see Sivs perspective of game one here summoning catapult dragon putting jet falcon on the board for a power gladiator and 500 burn setting the tgx3 dx2 for some follow-up plays we see a set five pass from air escape here trap does shoot in the standby phase man heavy storm would be really nice right about now yagan will bounce that power gladiator to hand but jet falcon will attack directly not bothered by that we will see a set dimensional prison here. Jet Falcon beat down, I guess it is. Sometimes these simplified game states really do do be like that. Uh, attacking with the Jet Falcon into the dimensional prison here, setting the MST. Sets two more cards. I mean, at this point, he basically doesn't have to fear the Heavy Storm anymore because of the Starlight Road. Special Summon Striker sinks him for eight and passes the turn. W Nebula Meteorite is drawn here, sees a lot of traps and none of his worms basically. Summons the Brionac after monster reborning the Yagan but is met with a solemn strike 
Solemn warning, sorry. Uh, almost immediately, TGX3 recycles some cards. Rhoda adds a junk synchron, but it doesn't matter because Rush Rhino has already finished the game. And just like the last times, we are swapping perspectives between games, seeing Alice's, Alice's perspective for this one. Um, so we can, you know, better see his way to his comeback here. Do LEDing here for three, adding a copy of sex. Setting Yagan and a W medium meteorite as an interruption. Flipping the Yagan, Yagan triggers, and Wonder Magician goes straight back to the extra deck where she came from. Worm King is summoned here by tributing a. Oh, by the W Media Meteorite. Um, we see a Murphos clear his board here. Junk Synchron runs into Yagan but is get gets bounced in return after bonking of the 1800 defense. Monster Rebound brings back King. King at Attempts to pop the back row, but effect way up will put a stop to that. Honest will bounce itself back to hand, and with that, it is Sif's turn. He will set a copy of TG Striker here. Let's get drawing into a seven tools of defended. Normal summoning Yagan here, so he's offering to the Snake Deity both set cards. But both TG monsters floating in end phase here for Catapult Dragon and War Wolf. Heavy Storm clears the entire back row, must feel nice. Uh, Junction Crown brings back the Striker here, special summoning Warwolf going into Ally of Justice Catastor here, which is such a big card in this matchup. Um, not only for lore reasons, um, but also for the fact that we are seeing an entire light deck being played here. Carteros gets attacked, adds a worm. And we see Junk Synchron and Catapult Dragon swing in for some more damage before being turned into a Wonder Magician, which has to pop the back row. Going into Blade Blaster on that main phase 2. Normal summoning the Zex here, milling a worm, summoning back the Yagan, which Sif will attempt to bounce the hand with Compulse, but he has another Yagan engraved. So Blade Blaster's days are basically already numbered. But. An honest in hand will honestly make his end a bit faster. Another normal summon for Zex miss a Cardero setting the solemn warning, keeping Yagan face down in terms of a big follow up play. But the Warwolf will add a Rush Rhino, which will get normal summoned and warninged. And this will look like a tie. Setting the MST, setting the Yagan for game here. And with that, we are moving into game three. And just like that, it is game three of the finals. Both contestants are tied up. I would try to make this exciting at this point, but you all know who won. Um, we can see, you know, Summer King Ryo hitting the board here. I think a fair decision to torrential this because Ryo is such a big stun card for the time. Um, Draws into duality, really good top deck here. Monster Reborn on the Ryo. Ryo is met with a DD Crow. Setting the Yagan here, the infamous play. Synchroing into a Brionic, triggering the Sangan and Grave, adding Warwolf. But Yagan will bounce Brionic right back into the extra deck. You will make Brionic again. Discarding one to bounce the back row, swinging over Yagan and setting a compulse here. Dark Hole will hit the field and wipe the field clean. Pot of Duality grabs a compulse for himself as a follow up play, sets three passes. Um, yeah, Foolish Barrier will bounce the plague spreader here. Monster Reborn onto Brio Neck to see if we can get some synchro plays going. Compulse will be activated here to prevent a bigger threat from hitting the board. Because with plague spreader in the grave, he could do some fun stuff. Compulse is drawn. Yagan is flipped. And Yagan swings for a thousand. And this seems like a repeat of game one where Jet Falcon was just getting in for some damage. But now it is one Yagan. Carteros will be set. Yagan swings in for another thousand. 
And now Sif draws into Cyber Magician, sets that at the Compulse from hand. And Escape draws into Mirror Force, flips the Carter Rose, which is met with an effect Veiler. Carter Rose swings over the Cyber Magician, and Yagan will get in for his third consecutive strike. At this point, this should be an instant win condition. Sif normal summons Rush Rhino, which is met with a Dimensional Prison, but he uses his Compulse to save the Rhino. And we see El Escape top deck into Birdman here, which he normally summons into Triforce. And Triforce is actually able to summon back the Yagan on Synchro Summon, since, you know, Yagan was a light in face on defense position, which is a really cool interaction, to be fair. Um, makes the Brionek here with the Plex Spreader from Grave, which gets instantly warninged. And Genex Ally tri uh, Triforce, not Triumph, is able to to secure Alice escape his win. So, um, again, really, you know, congratulations. Um, just, you know, good job on winning your first tournament in the server Alice escape. Generally, a huge thank you also to everyone who competed this time. And yeah, if anything you uh, saw in this video piqued your interest and you would like a fairly casual Yu-Gi-Oh community of a couple of dudes that are just having fun and enjoying the game on a fairly casual level definitely check us out the invite link will be in the description below just as last time we'd be glad to welcome you into the community and have some duels but with everything out of the way I will thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.